Hey there everybody, how's it going? Today I'm gonna go over a renal ultrasound uh, protocol and just some basics. Um, here's a quick view of the anatomy. Um, here's a cross-section, sagittal cross-section of the kidney gross anatomy and then the ultrasound. Um, here you can see the renal cortex all around it. And this is the associated renal cortex on a sonogram. Um, the renal medulla or the medullary pyramids are these right here. They're usually hypoechoic. And then the cortex is like medium level echoes. And then you have the renal sinus fat, which is echogenic. Again, the medullary pyramids. And then in between the medullary pyramids, the cortex goes down and there you have your columns. Normal kidneys you have usually are bilateral, retroperitoneal organs. Um, the right is located right under the, the liver. The left is located right under the spleen. Um, the normal size is usually nine to 14 centimeters in adults. Um, usually from 9 to like 12 in females and about 10 to 13, 14 in uh, males. The echogenicity is less than the liver and less than the spleen. And it also contains the pelvic seal system, which is where the urine collects and then goes down into the ureter and down into the bladder. All right, the normal ure ureters are really, are usually difficult to visualize on normal patients, um, unless you use a high resolution transducer. And even then sometimes they're a little hard to see if they're not, if they're dilated, then you can see them. Here's a, uh, one with a uh, wall thickening, and this patient had a, an infection. So you can see the wall thickening very easy, so it outlines the, the ureter. Um, you can use Doppler to see the ureteral jets, which is the urine going inside the bladder in real time. Uh, when they're, uh, they're usually dilated uh, because of reflux, um, stones, or masses. They can be duplicated. So, and when you're scanning them, it's good to check for thickening. The normal bladder, when filled adequately, uh, is, can contain you know, a good amount of, of urine. Um, if, you have, if you're scanning and the patient has a very filled bladder and they have mild hydro or mild pelviectasis, you can have the patient void a little bit, see if that resolves that. The normal wall thickness of the bladder is usually less than three, three millimeters or 0.3 centimeters. When you're scanning the bladder, check for debris, stones, masses. Uh, the most common tumor or cancer of the of the ureters and bladder is transitional cell carcinoma. And if you're scanning babies, it's uh, good to scan the bladder first to avoid, uh, they might have a full bladder and they might void as soon as you start scanning them. So go there first and then you can go to the kidneys. All right, so there are many variants to normal renal anatomy. I'm gonna go through each one. Uh, the first one is a very common one. It's a junctional parenchymal defect. It's a triangular shaped echogenic structure that usually an invagination into the cortex of sinus fat is frequently seen in the upper lobe and is a remnant of fetal lobulation. So here you can see a small one. A fetal lobulation is the incomplete fusion of the developing renal lobules. Uh, the kidneys, when they're originating in the embryo or fetus, are, have distinct lobules that fuse as they develop and then begin to ascend up into the abdomen. Um, so when a baby is born, you'll still see these little lobulations. It's, it's a normal normal anatomical variation and it usually resolved by five months though in some people it persists into adulthood. So the column of Burton's are those cortical bands in between the medullary pyramids. Uh, sometimes you have a large column of Burton which is called a hypertrophy which is called a hypertrophy column of Burton. Um, sometimes that can be mistaken for a mass. You see uh, th these two patients have a lot of sinus fat and then a little invagination here. That's just a column of Burton that's bigger than usual. Um, you can see it has the same echogenicity as the rest of the renal tissue. There's no, there's no defect in the contour of the kidney, so the chances of it being a, a tumor are highly unlikely. A dromedary hump is a bulge in the middle of the kidney, usually the left kidney. It's caused by the impression of the spleen in the developing kidney. This is a very dramatic case of it. Uh, you know, so you see this, you might think, oh man, this patient has a, a tumor. But you can see there's even renal pyramids and a normal cortex. If this is a tumor, you would have a heterogeneous echo texture. So if, you know, if there's any real, real doubt, they could also do a CAT scan to rule it out. But usually a dromedary hump is pretty common, seen in the left kidney. Nothing to worry about. All right, horseshoe kidney is one of the most common fusion anom anomalies. Uh, it's seen in one, f one in 400 to 500 births and more common in males. Uh, it's a congenital fusion of the lower poles of the kidney and uh, usually have an isthmus overlying the spine, aorta, and IBC. 
Here's a less horseshoe kidney with a linear transducer. You can see you got nice resolution. Here's your left iliac artery and iliac vein, your vertebral body. Here you have the isthmus, right kidney, left kidney. This is the right uh, renal pelvis. It's a little, little prominent. And the left renal pelvis is a little smaller. Sometimes you can have mal-rotated uh, pelvis, pelvis in the uh, horseshoe kidneys. Here's another case where you see the isthmus in front of the IVC, aorta, and vertebral body. And here you have bowel in front of it. Just with a curved transducer, you can see it's much more grainy, but you can still see the horseshoe very clear. Um, these are, are pretty easily missed. Um, if you're having trouble getting a good view of the lower pole of each kidney, you're not getting a nice rounded off view, you can kind of try to follow it angle medially to see if the kidney does cross over and fuse with the other kidney. Another fusion anomaly is cross fused renal ectopia. That's when both kidneys are located on one side and they're fused. And they shape, sometimes they form like an L type shape. So this is a sagittal view on the right side. You see this is a right kidney and then jutting out on the lower pole is the left kidney. On the left side of the abdomen, here's the spleen. You can see the left renal fossa is empty. On transverse, you can see the transverse right kidney and then the the left kidney is more longitudinal. Here's a better picture. Liver, your right kidney, psoas mus muscle, and then the, the left kidney, um, more longitudinal and connected right here. Um, it's thought left to right ectopy is thought to be three times more common. So you're more commonly gonna see it on the right side. All right, ectopic kidney is when the kidney is located not where it's supposed to be. Usually they're up in the retroperitoneal spaces uh, in the upper quadrants of the abdomen, caused by failure of the ascent of the kidney during fetal development. Um, and it's considered to be, uh, has a, a frequency of one in 900 births. Here's a midline abdominal view, lower abdominal view. Here you can see the vertebral bodies and this sagittal kidney and the lower abdomen. Here's a picture of another patient with a pelvic kidney. It's even lower than this one. So sagittal midline view, here you got bladder, here's your uterus, you can see the endometrial stripe right here, and a nice view of the kidney and the pelvis. If you're scanning uh, and you see that one of the renal fossa is missing a kidney, you search for it. If you search very diligently and still don't find a kidney, they might just have an absent kidney due to either renal agenesis. Uh, if you have a history of nephrectomy, you already know from the get-go that they don't have a kidney wherever they removed it. Um, some kids have multi-cystic dysplastic kidneys. Those kidneys end up uh, involuting and they become very hard to visualize. And it might seem that there's no kidney in, in, a, in one side. Um, usually when you only have one kidney, the other kidney goes what's called, undergoes what's called compensatory hypertrophy. So it compensates and it becomes larger than if you had both kidneys. Uh, here's you get your view of the left upper quadrant. Here's your spleen. No kidney in the left renal fossa. Here's your right upper quadrant. You got your liver and your right kidney. Um, if you see, if you start scanning, you have a patient like this. Search very well in the pelvis and the inguinal canal to just to be sure that it's not a, uh, an ectopic kidney. All right, extra renal pelvis is when you have the renal pelvis is a it is prominent and is located outside the renal hilum, and it makes it look like there's a cyst there. But this is a, a normal variant usually uh, not associated with any disease process. Um, it's not like a UPJ obstruction, which would have a very large um, renal pelvis, but also caliceal di dilation. All right, malrotation is a variation uh, in the location of the kidney, especially when you're talking about the kidney's uh, renal hilum. So normally the kidney's renal hilum and transverse is comes out the mid pole and, uh, and moves posterior uh, medially and then downward toward the bladder. Uh, in this case, you have a uh, sagittal kidney and here you can see the, the renal sinus and the pelvis is here in the anterior portion of the kidney. And this is a transverse. You can see the pelvis right here in the anterior portion of the kidney. Sometimes it can be even more, uh, um, more exaggerated and be even more lateral. This is usually an incidental finding. Uh, if it is associated with anything, it could be UTIs, kidney stones, and uh, reflux. But it is usually an incidental finding with no problems. All right, duplicated renal collecting system can be complete or incomplete. Here you see you have two 
what appears to be two echogenic renal sinuses and a band of cortical tissue. Here you can see it again, renal sinus, renal sinus, and this nice band of cortical tissue. Um, usually the kidney is longer than the opposite side, unless both have duplicated systems. Uh, if it's complete, you'll have two ureters as well. If it's incomplete, you'll have one ureter, or you can have a bifid ureter that becomes one somewhere down the line and then goes into the, ure into the bladder. With a complete duplicated system, sometimes you can have a non-functioning non ureter that can cause hydronephrosis of one of the moieties. It's usually the upper pole moiety, and sometimes it's also associated with uh, ureteral seals. So keep that in mind. If you see a duplicated system with one side of the kidney that's hydronephrotic and the other side is normal. All right, so for the protocol, you want to prepare your patient by having them drink at least three cups of water at least one hour before the exam to uh, be well hydrated and so their bladder can be full. Um, things to consider when scanning is location are the kidneys where they're supposed to be and uh, the retroperitoneal space on either side of the abdomen. Um, the shape, does it have the reniform shape? They're kind of elongated and ovalish. Um, the echogenicity, is it less in the, less in the liver as is normal? The cortical medullary differentiation, you have the, um, the medium echo echoes of the cortex, which is just slightly uh, less echogenic than the liver. And then the medullary pyramids are hypoechoic compared to the uh, renal cortex. That's, uh, that's the normal um, configuration. The bladder, is it uh, full? Um, are the walls thick? Are they thin? Is there stones present inside the bladder? Is the debris in the bladder? Are the ureters dilated? Can you see both ureteral jets? Is there any ureteral seals? And the adrenals are hard to see in adults unless there's a, a tumor. Very easy to see in, in newborn infants. So in scanning, beginning in sagittal, you want to take a midline picture, then a lateral picture, and a medial picture. You want to measure your kidney in midline. So you would measure from here to here, length. AP measurement from here to here. You can see the, the renal pyramids, the cortex, the echogenic renal sinus. Here you can see the pelvis. This is the psoas muscle. Here you have the liver. Again, liver, diaphragm, a little bit of the psoas here. And here you see more of the psoas. Then you go to transverse. You want to take images superior mid and inferior. If this was a malrotated kidney, here you can see you have the, the renal hilum where it's supposed to be, right at the center, and then the ureter will kind of poster immediately and then down into the bladder. If the renal hilum or renal pelvis is located here or here, that's a malrotated kidney. If you're gonna measure, you wanna measure at the mid pole in transverse. All right, so on patients that uh, it is allowable, you know, skinnier patients, uh, relatively thinner patients, and obviously children, you can uh, put the patient prone, lay him down face, face down, and scan through the back, and you get some very nice views of the kidneys. Let's say, for instance, you had a very tiny cyst in the posterior aspect. This is, uh, this is posterior, this is anterior, superior, inferior. If you had a cyst or something in the posterior aspect of the kidney, you can get a nice view. You could also use the linear on uh, children and get even really nice pictures. Here you have a piece of the psoas muscle right here, quadratus lumborum, and same thing right here, back muscle. And here you, know, you see the nice cortical medullary differentiation here. You got the hypoechoic renal pyramids and the more hyperechoic renal cortex. Okay, so the bladder. You want to begin sagittal or transverse, it really doesn't matter. But in sagittal, you take a midline view, look at the wall, make sure it's uh, thin, make sure the bladder is adequately filled, uh, scan laterally to the right you can see the right ureter orifice that way if and also you can put doppler to see the, the jet scan to the left you can see the left ureter orifice um and the left ureter jet if you put doppler on transverse you want to take superior mid and inferior views and the ureters will be around this region here if you put doppler you'll see the jets like this so this is a female you have the, the bladder the abdominal muscles here abdominal fat you have uh, the vagina the rectum. So here's your right ureter jet. So your ureter comes in here and then boop, dumps the urine in there. And then you have the left coming in this way. And the streams sometimes cross, sometimes the streams go, go this way. This is a very normal configuration of the streams of the ureteral jets. 
Um, if you had a stone here, you'd, you'd see a necogenic structure, and you, with color Doppler, you see twinkling artifacts sometimes. So that's pretty much it. Um, I want to do another lecture on renal pathologies. Um, I also have another lecture on renal artery Doppler that I will link to in the description. Um, thank you for watching, and take care. Peace.